Hi folks, and welcome to another batch of your replays. I have a few hours to myself, so touch wood, I'm going to get a couple of videos recorded today. Anyhow, we are kicking off with a couple of replays from Beron, who um, basically is going to be in a couple of tanks that haven't appeared in the channel in years. Um, and we're going to start with the T-50, which is the uh, Tier 5 Russian light tank in-game. Now, um, the T-50, which, as I say, hasn't been on the channel forever, but uh, it was developed in 1939, just prior to World War II, surprisingly as a replacement for the T-26 infantry support tank. Um, the T-26 uh, was the Soviet name for the Vickers six-ton tank, but um, uh, even though the T-50 was designed to be a fast light tank, it actually wasn't designed to replace the BT series of tanks. Uh, the BTs were the Russian light tanks, but this tank, even though it was another light tank, wasn't designed to replace them, it was designed to replace the Vickers because the Vickers was slow and it was basically used to provide infantry support. The problem with the Vickers is because it was slow, it couldn't keep up with the uh, with the Vickers or with the T-26s, so it couldn't engage in combined operations. Uh, so it was decided that basically they needed another tank to replace the Vickers or the T-26, but still make it fast enough to keep up with the BT so they uh, basically could work together. Um, the T-50 was pretty advanced for its time period in that uh, basically it was uh, designed in 1939. And as you can see, it has sloped armor, so uh, pretty advanced. It also had a three-man turret, which was very, very rare for its time. It had a radio, a standard. All the T-50s had radios, and that was very, very rare for Russian tanks. Most Russian tanks in the late 1930s, early 1940s still used flag systems, didn't have radios. Um, uh, it used torsion bar suspension, and the cupola, or the cupola on the tank, was uh, very, very advanced for its time. In fact, uh, the T-50 was the only uh, pre-war uh, when it was designed tank, Russian tank, to use this cupola and uh, this didn't reappear until the IS-2 so um, this was a very very advanced tank for its time um, but that was also the problem because when the tank went into production in 1941 it had a lot of parts um, and it also had a diesel engine. Now it basically the um, because it had a lot of parts, it, it consequently took longer to produce than other Russian tanks. Um, and the engine, it was a brand new diesel engine compared to the previous petrol engines that were being used, but it was very, very temperamental. So when this tank was basically built, it took longer to build because it had more parts, it was more complicated to build, um, and it was more expensive because it had more parts, and then when they were finally built they kept breaking down because the engines weren't very reliable. And uh, with the invasion of Germany, um, or well, when the Germans invaded, basically the need to produce a tank quickly and efficiently, um, you know, didn't go in the T-50's favour. Um, the T-34 medium tank that was also being developed at the same time could pretty much do the same job as this tank, but was actually cheaper to produce. So this was a light tank that was more expensive than the T-34, and it could be produced more quickly, and it could be produced more cheaply. So um, basically the T-50 basically was cancelled, you know, in favour of the T-34, simply because the engine was unreliable and it just took longer to build and was a little bit more expensive. So um, it did enter production, but only 69 of them were ever built before the project was cancelled. Um, and the T-50 only ever used a 45mm uh, gun. In fact, both guns for this tank, the stock gun and the final gun, are 45mm, which is historically accurate. Um, and how does the tank add, uh, you know, how does it play in game? Well, the T-50 is actually very, very competitive. Um, it's got almost, you know, it's got the joint top speed with most of the other Tier 5 light tanks at 60 kilometers an hour. It's got a uh, very, very good reverse speed. It's got the best reverse speed. But um, the thing that maybe makes this tank stand out from all the others is the fact it's incredibly maneuverable. It's got the best turret traverse speed. It's got the best track or tank traverse speed. And it's got the best traverse speed uh, terrain resistance while turning the tank. So this turns very, very well. It accelerates very, very well. Um, gets to its top speed very easily. It reverses very well. And because it's got a very, very fast turning turret, you can circle enemy to tanks to death very, very easily in the uh, T-50. The only downside to this tank that I can really, really think about is, um, you know, it's only got 37 millimeters of armor, but that's actually quite good for a tier 5 light tank, but uh, it's got 7 degrees of gun depression, which, you know, isn't bad. Um, it, pretty average for tier 5 uh, meet or light tanks um, but the you know the view range is only 350 meters so basically this is a tank that has the worst view range of any of the tier 5 light tanks in the game all the others have 360 meters so the view range is a little bit 
iffy, but the maneuverability is very, very good. It's also got the joint highest DPM. So uh, while the penetration is slightly lower, it's actually got the lowest penetration of all the other tier five light tanks in the game um, at 90. Some of the others are about 95, 96, but um, it's not that much lower, uh, but it does have the best rate of fire and the best DPM or joint best DPM along with the Leopard. So um, it's a pretty good package. Very, very maneuverable, got very, very good DPM and it's pretty good at firing on the move as well so um the only downside as i say is the view range so uh we're gonna go uh, we are here with buron on um oh let's get fix that first and go to siegfried line so i'm kind of just going straight into these because um i don't have a lot of time i don't have a lot of spare time anymore uh it's an assault game here on i'm i'm just brain dead secret line yes and uh we're gonna go so it looks as if buron is playing Aggressively, he's going for early spots here. So uh, this seems to be a very, very good game from the results. And he spotted a leopard. Okay, so it looks as if he's doing some rolling scouting in the north of the map. Not too many tanks spotted north. Most of the enemy had been spotted in the middle or south. As you can see, um, if the hill hadn't been in the way, that would have been a, a hit. So this tank is actually quite good at shooting on the move. The accuracy is about 0.38. I think it's four in the garage, but the actual stats are about 0.38 once you've got a 100% crew in it. Um, so yeah, the accuracy isn't terrible either. It's got about the best accuracy of any of the tier fives. It's also got decent aim time at about 1 point, or 1.9, I believe. Um, so yeah, rate of fire and aim time don't really match up that well, but the aim time isn't terrible. So you can see that the reticule isn't getting very big here while he's driving around. So it doesn't look as if the enemy have sent anyone north so, um, Baron is here, he's only got 38 assistance damage, slow start, oh, S35CA, looks as if he's using the 105mm, that's a very, very dangerous tank, although his view range is not very good, and with the 6 cents going off, yeah, see the shooting on the move, that's what I was saying, that the tank is actually quite good at shooting on the move, but I think Baron did the correct thing, when a 6 cents went out off, he got into cover, now he's trying to use 7 degrees of gun depression, so, um, RT's gone down, he's getting more assistance damage, someone's blind firing the uh, S35CA. So, uh, just advancing two TDs over this ridge, oh, and RT. So, he's moving up, oh, misses that one on the move, hits the, uh, hits the dragon's teeth. And yeah, he's, he's got this tank, uh, well, well outmaneuvered. So GW Panther, yeah, most of the enemy team are in the south, so he's got this RT all to himself. Is he going to get shotgunned? Oh, bounces on the gun. But uh, you can see the rate of fire is very, very good. The gun depression over the rear of the tank obviously isn't. So seven degrees of gun depression, and he hasn't got shots now. So can he get up? Look how well this tank turns. Yeah, tank turns on a dime. It's got very, very good maneuverability. Just trying to see, does Baron use camo? Yeah, he's using camo here. He's got um, the free camo. He's uh, basically got camo on the hull of the tank, not on the turret. That confused me for a moment, but that's clever. So Baron's using a fully camoed up tank that costs nothing to camo up. No gold, no credits, because he's using a free camo on the hull alone. And there's going to be a video about that coming out very, very soon, as soon as I have a chance to make it. But uh, he's doing his uh, 60 kilometers an hour here. He's getting up to his top speed quite easily. He's on the hunt, no more RT to find. He's staying on the edge of the map. I don't know. Um, yeah, his team his team seem to be spread out. There are very, very few concentrations of tanks. The enemy team are concentrated. Uh, Baron's team are very, very spread out. And that that's not great. Try and stick with friends, try and stick with uh, friendlies. If you go on into a group of enemy tanks alone like the Leo is, you're gonna be outnumbered, outshot. You're, even if you're on full health or have armor, it's usually a tricky proposition because you've got multiple tanks shooting you. But he's managed to flank the AMX. He gets taken out. Now it's the Panther. So this guy could be... Oh, he's giving his side. Okay. Oh, Baron switched to premium. And yeah, okay. Panther is looking his way. Yep. All right. Switch to premium to deal with the Panther. There's also... What's that? That's a Type 58. Oh, Churchill. Nope focused on the panther again with premium ammunition side of the turret there we go switches back to regular ammunition let's see premium ammunition gets up to 130 with 70 damage regular is 90 with 70 okay yeah played it safe 
use premium against the panther. He's got side shots on the Churchill. Doesn't need to use premium ammunition as long as he's got side shots. The only downside with the low alpha is it's a lot more difficult to track enemy tanks. You need to fire three or four shots into their tracks. But, um, okay, their team is still losing. It is three versus four, and there's a very, very dangerous E25 on the enemy team. So Baron's moving in, looking for isolated tanks. E25 and OI were last spotted on the zero line. Churchill seems to be alone in the middle, and the Type 58 has his own work cut out for him in the south against the SU-12244. So Baron's hunting, he's looking for the Churchill. And as I say, this is a very fast maneuverable tank. It can turn very, very well. So he's flanked. And the Churchill misses by a mile, wow. But uh, yeah, he's just turning around, trying to track the Churchill, not doing it, gets to his side. Okay, and well, Churchill misses again. So, not fun premium, trying to get shots into the side. Oh, this Churchill's reactions are terrible. He's just circling this Churchill, he probably got lucky here, could have taken a couple of hits with the Churchill. Bounces on the side of the turret, finishes him off, okay. Ah, uh, that was a lot harder work than it could have been, but while that was going on, it's now one versus two. The OI has come back. It looks like the E25 came back as well because they took out the remaining friendlies in the south. So Baron is on three kills. He's on 1500 damage. And um, it's one versus two right now. So the OI is probably going to need premium ammunition. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, he switched to premium ammunition for the OI. But it's the E25 is probably the more dangerous tank. So. Um, nice use of bush mechanics, trying to get into a place where he can fire without being spotted. Shots, shoots above the tracks, bounces on the OI. Oh, another premium shot in. So, did he get spotted when he drove out from behind? Nope, he hasn't been spotted. So, um, oh, it looks like the E25 is flanking. I missed that. E25 appeared on the minimap briefly. So, um, oh, he's hunting. Okay, E25, he's found him. This tank turns very, very well. Even the E25 can't keep up with the rate of turning here. The traverse rate. Circling an E25 to death. That doesn't happen very often, but... Oh, looky, looky to get another shot off before the E25 could fire again. So, nicely done. Outmaneuvering an E25 is not done in very many tanks. Meanwhile, the OI is coming to get him. So, uh, Baron's on... What is it? Four kills now? 2,000 damage as a tier 5 and a tier 7 game. So he's bottom tier. <laughs> Looks like some of his teammates are, are pretty happy. Yeah, well, the E25 is on 5 kills. Yeah, okay. So his teammates weren't happy with the E25 killing them. Now they're happy the E25 is dead. So I guess that's encouragement. So uh, Buron's playing his tank to its strengths. He's using its camo rating. He's using its view range. And I thought he got away with it there. I thought he got away with it there. That's a little bit unfortunate. The OI spotted him before he could get down into cover. So we know where the OI is. The OI is coming. He last saw Buron driving in this direction, so is he going to keep coming? So with only 70 alpha, the OI is going to take a lot more than one shot to kill, even though he's on relatively low health. So, timer's going off. It is assault. It's only a 10 minute battle, just over one and a half minutes left. Baron's trying, trying to flank the OI. No sign. Oh, there he is. One shot into the side, as I say, nice shooting on the move. Oh, and takes him out just as he gets into cover. So, good game. Five kills for Baron there in the T50. Yeah, it's been ages since I featured this tank on the channel. Um, I think I think the last time I featured this tank was on a map that's been removed from the game about for about two years now. I can't remember the map, um, but anyway, it was an ace, not surprisingly, and an Orlix medal for destroying two enemy tanks or tank destroyers and a light tank that must be at least one tier higher. Pretty easy to do when you've got an ace tanker in a T50 as bottom tier. So uh, well played. He finished up with 1409 XP, 2000 damage, five kills. He also picked up. Not not very much assistance damage actually, but he was uh, in damage dealing 
mode he was flanking used his tank on the outskirts of the map um and uh yeah made a loss um how did he make a loss i didn't realize oh because he had to shoot quite a few premium rounds at the oi and at the panther so uh it looks as if the am premium ammunition isn't particularly cheap he also had to use a premium consumable so oh a loss but um yeah, okay. Sometimes when you're bottom tier, you've got to fire premium. There's no choice. But uh, it was a 1409 game on a regular account. Would have been 2000 with a premium account. And even with a premium account, he still would have made a slight loss. Not as much. But um, yeah, you got to do what you got to do. So uh, thank you for sending that in. But I don't think we're done with Baron yet. Because next up, Baron is here in an IS on Malinovka. Yes, and once again, exactly like the previous replay, he's using the camo on the hull, no camo on the turret, so his tank is camoed up for free. Doesn't cost him anything, but um, he's top tier, Malinovka, and you would expect top tier to go hill. And that looks what he's doing. Looks as if he's... Yeah, it definitely looks as if he's going to hill. So, um... Yeah, the uh, replay results for this, uh, there were a heck of a lot of medals. A heck of a lot of medals for this one, so let's see how it works out. So, Baron has got two marks of excellence on his barrel already. Okay, uh, this game definitely contributed to his third mark of excellence, because as I said, so I've seen the results, but um, he's going to move, but he's not going hill. It looks as if he's going into where normally light tanks and medium tanks go, but it doesn't look as if the light tanks and medium tanks are interested in advancing. A lot of TDs on his team who are camping field. Uh, 12T got spotted, so there's his eyes. Oh, lots of T67s up here, but um, yeah, top tier IS. It can be very, very good. Problem is that it doesn't have a heck of a lot of gun depression, but uh, he's using it here. I think it's six degrees of gun depression. So he takes out the T67 for his first kill. Doesn't get spotted. Don't know if he has six cents or not. But uh, his eyes are in danger of dying here with the AMX-12T in the middle. I do have an AMX-12T replay someone sent it to me. I'll have a look at that replay maybe maybe when I'm done with this video and maybe try and bring you another one depending on time. Oh, terrible, terrible. That, that, was, that was a mistake. That could have got you spotted. Doesn't look as if... Look as if you have six cents, or maybe maybe you've just got a camo crew in the IS. I don't know. Oh, there we go. So the downside with the IS is it's very good when it's top tier because it's got 390 damage. And the downside to the IS is when it's not top tier and it's only got 175 millimeters of uh, penetration. The premium ammo is okay at 217, but the problem is the premium ammo on the IS is very very expensive. So um, he's just look. Why isn't he going for the stirrer? He should have gone for the stair. Oh, well, he gets a KV-1, he gets an engine fire, but stair is like two tiers higher than the KV-1. Oh, you would have got far more XP by shooting the stair. Well, it doesn't work out that way because you burn the KV-1 to death, so that takes you up to a thousand damage and two kills in the IS. Um, and yeah, he's just, he's playing the support role. I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I suppose there are plenty of heavies going hill. KV-85, KV-1S. Actually, it's quite amusing those two tanks are going hill. Uh, KV-85 and KV-1S were both stopgap tanks, so um, KV-1 was the main heavy tank for the Russians in, during World War II, and um, the IS was designed to replace the KV-1, but the IS was in development, um, and while it was in development, the um, Russians needed a stopgap tank, so they developed the uh, KV-1S and the KV-85. Um, they weren't built in large numbers, but they were basically built as a stopgap heavy tanks um, until the IS could be properly developed, and that didn't, didn't happen till 1943. So, um, yeah, the IS. Um, the other thing I pointed out, I pointed it out during the IS-2, is it worth it, is that the IS we have in game, or the IS-1 we have in game, nice shot sniping with an IS, Russian guns. Um, yeah, the IS we have in game is a prototype. So this tank is a prototype. Um, only 130 of these tanks were ever built. Um, so the IS-1 was simply a prototype for the IS-2. And there were 3,000 IS-2s built as he takes out another one. So the premium tank is actually the production tank and this is the prototype. And as I say, this was built shortly after the KV-85 was built as a stopgap, the KV-1S was built as a stopgap, and this was built as a prototype, but Russia needed tanks fast, so even though it was just a prototype, the first 50 of these that were built rolled off the production line with an 85mm gun, and they were called the IS-85. 
And the second 50 that rolled off the production line came with a 100mm gun. They were called the IS-100. And the remaining 30 tanks finally got the 122mm gun and they became the IS-122. So to avoid any confusion, because then... Oh, HE. Okay, well, very difficult to pen with 175 millimeters of penetration there, but um, yeah, to avoid confusion between the IS-2, which came with 122 millimeter, and the ISs, which came with a variety of guns, including the 122 millimeter. Oh, didn't didn't have time. Yeah, aim time is not amazing. Um, the IS-122 was renamed the IS-2. And the IS-85 and the IS-100 were renamed IS-1s. So technically, technically, this is an IS-2 with 122mm, model 1943. Whereas the IS-2 premium tank is the IS-2 model 1944. So, uh, anyway, yeah, 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 I'm, I know. When I start talking, I can't stop, and I'm ignoring the game here, so, um, he's up to, what is it, 2k damage, 1,000 assistance damage, um, okay, just playing it safe, sniping in an IS is never great, but, um, it seems to be doing the job, as, you know, his team aren't being very adventurous, they aren't really moving forward, and, ah, that was, that was an old man reaction shot. I'm not sure how old Baran is, but uh, that was definitely one of my shots. It's an old man reaction shot. Hint of a shot of the KV-85. Keeping an eye on the minimap. Is the IS poking? Is the KV-85? Yeah, it doesn't look as if the KV-85 is going to be doing anything here. KV-1S. So, just looking for shots. Again, he's using bush mechanics here. Trying to keep bushes between himself and potential targets. Could be a shot here. Oh, it's just a cupola and he's disappeared. Unlucky. Oh, KB1S has gone ham. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. He did get spotted, but what he did was he advanced till the bush went clear, spotted the KB1S, got its outline, and then reversed back down so that the um, bush went solid so he could fire before being spotted. But um, advancing did get him spotted, and Artie is in play. If I were here, what I'd be doing is I'd be pointing where Artie is. Look at the arrow on the minimap. So now I know Artie is sitting in F0. But, um, yeah, F-Zero, I'd be letting my RT know RT was an F-Zero as well. I'd be telling my RT that RT is an F-Zero, but KB-85, not much to shoot at here. Looks as if he may be shooting through houses, but, oh, gets that one in. 454 damage, nice. Takes him up to 2.5k, 2,000 assistance damage. Now, remember, this is a tank that doesn't have very good view range. It's a heavy tank, he may be top tier, but his view range is not the best. The gun is definitely not a good gun for sniping with, especially when he's top tier, but um, he's getting results. He's up to, what is it, 2.5 or 4.5k combined damage. He is running out of ammunition, and that is a problem because, um, yeah, the, you can see that the tank doesn't hold that much ammunition. He's only got, what is it, 13 rounds left, only two rounds of regular, and then he's going to, ooh, T-34 in the minimap behind him. He... I don't know if he spotted him, but um, T-67, a shot in the move. Oh, boy. That would have really, really been Russian accuracy if that one got in. Oh, he's aware of the T-34 now. T-34 sets him on fire. That's not good. And he doesn't have a fire extinguisher. Thankfully, the T-34 caliber gun, the gun on the T-34, didn't do enough. Yeah, oh, he's, oh, now the T-67's appeared out of nowhere and bounces. He's on 27 health. The T-67 is just bounced. He's going to die here from there. No, he doesn't. Ah! Okay. He, he got very, very aggressive, pushed forward. He's just bounced another shot or his tracks absorbed it from the T-34. He really, really should be dead twice over. If the T-67 hadn't shot in the mood, uh, on the move and waited to get to his side before firing, he probably would have died. If the T-34 had aimed a little bit more carefully and nodded to the tracks, he probably would have died. But it looks like the T-34 is coming for the kill. Baron was waiting, takes him out for kill number six. Okay, um, ah, he's very, very lucky. So that's just Artie. I'm surprised Artie hasn't fired again, considering Artie was down in F-0. Surprised Artie's leaving him alone, but um, he's gonna move up, checking the outline, looking for an outline on the Arl. He spotted the gorilla. Okay, turning around. A little bit of auto-aim to get his tank on target. 
and takes out the grill for kill number seven. So uh, one enemy tank left, the RL44, and you can see on in chat people are saying Walters. So I don't know if his team are going to let him get it. No, his team don't let him get it. T67 takes out the RL44, but uh, yeah, it was a good result. Good result in the IS, another tank that hasn't featured on the channel in forever. So this is what attracted me to the replay. It was an ace tanker. He also picked up a hand of God in here. Survive and win the battle, having received damage from at least four different enemy tanks. I think he received damage from pretty much every one of the enemy team, but um, he picked up a Bruno's medal awarded to players who destroy three or four enemy vehicles and survive the battle to victory, despite receiving at least five different critical hits and 80% more uh, of uh, loss of hit points. Oh boy, um, that one's quite rare to pick up. He picked up Brothers in Arms, uh, Spartan, uh, because of two lucky bounces at the end. Patrol Duty in an IS, that's something you would very, very rarely see. I might check my own stats next time I'm in-game, see how many Patrol Duties I've picked up in an IS. I guarantee it's very, very few, if any at all. I uh, picked up High Calibre and the Top Gun, because he didn't manage to get the 8th kill for the Radley Walters. Um, so he finished top on XP with a very, very impressive 1561, um, and that's incredibly impressive because he was top tier. You don't usually see XP totals that high when tanks are top tier, so 2,820 damage done with another 2,000 140 assistance damage um, most of his well no not most about half of his damage was done from a distance of more than 300 meters so using the IS's gun as a sniper not usually the best thing to do but then again it's Russian so uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't use it as a sniper um, and even though he ran out of regular ammunition had to fire a couple of rounds also using a premium uh, uh, consumable he ended up earning just a, a 10,000 credits profit with his uh, re uh, premium account he's gone to premium he was regular now he's gone to premium so uh, he would have made a loss of 11,000 credits if he'd been playing with a standard account but um, anyway yeah IS uh, hasn't been on the channel in ever forever so dumb heavy Soviet heavy good scout da yeah uh, good scout very good scout uh, I'm just uh, I I don't think I've ever picked up a patrol duty in the IS I'm going to have to check but uh, anyway guys I've got a a couple of hours to myself today um the uh nephews and nieces are all in the uh, swimming pool at the moment and i'm going to try and get as much recorded as i can while they're not here so uh, thank you guys for watching i'll see you next time